Gate Awakening the Sleeping Giant. Chapter 30 A Powerful Message. Written by Stephen Noon 1. Meanwhile in Belnago. They'd been sitting in their checkpoint for an entire day now. When the Imperial forces surrendered, the Temple of Hardy had been converted into a command post for coalition forces due to its central location in the city. Construction had started immediately as the ruins of the temple were cleared and replaced by temporary structures to house coalition forces. Dimitri and his squad had been assigned the task of guarding the northern checkpoint. Belnago was captured in less than a week, though the destruction would be visible for weeks at the very least. Supplies were already being brought in to begin reconstruction of the city. The citizens who had fled were allowed into the ruins where they helped begin the rebuilding process. In some areas of the city, particularly the eastern part, imperial resistance continued. Several squads had been sent to clear out the city blocks, but it was a slow process requiring houses to be cleared one by one. Dimitri was glad his squad didn't get assigned to that task. It had quickly become evident that there weren't enough personnel in the city to completely quell resistance. Due to this problem, command had ordered the creation of the Belnago People's Militia. The militia was to be recruited of locals, particularly those dissatisfied with the empire such as slaves, and given the minimal training required to put down resistance. Most of the militia would be using Shardaran weaponry, with only a handful of trusted individuals allowed to carry firearms, AK-47s and M16s. They aren't trustworthy enough than the Italica Corp. After all, Italica was more than happy to be taken by the Americans. Belnago however was invaded and nearly destroyed, there's no way in hell the civilian population of the city would trust them, especially since many civilians were still killed in Belnago. A memory that will forever be implanted on Dimitri's mind. Although he saw the necessary of such a thing, Dimitri didn't like allowing those who'd previously been suppressed to suddenly hold power over their former masters. He knew that soon enough, they'd be getting reports of former slave owners and wealthy nobles being executed for minor or even completely falsified crimes. Still, as long as the city was kept under firm coalition control, it would all be fine, he doesn't really care that any of the slavers would get killed, they deserved it of course. Dimitri sighed and surveyed the area in front of him from behind his sandbag bunker. The streets had been cleared of rubble to allow for vehicles to come through, but the buildings remained destroyed. They'd probably have to tear down a large part of the city in order to rebuild. From behind one of the ruined buildings, a woman came walking out. Dimitri had to blink several times to make sure he wasn't seeing things. Her skin was blue with yellow markings and she carried what looked to be a large scythe over her shoulder. But the strangest thing about her was the set of dragon wings on her back. Dimitri turned to another soldier who was sitting next to him. You see this shit? Dimitri asked. What the hell? He was equally as confused. God damn. He rubbed his eyes to make sure she was real. Sophia. Get the fuck over here. Dimitri shouted. Sophia, who studied Fallmart and its culture and history, stood herself up and jogged over to the bunker. Yes? Sophia asked. What is that thing? Dimitri spoke in Ukrainian. Sophia looked out the sandbag structure at the dragon woman. She then muttered out a word. Apostle. Sophia said worried. What? Dimitri asked. Servants of the gods, demigods in their own right. They are very dangerous. Sophia replied. Dimitri nodded before turning to the rest of his squad. Proceed with caution and don't do anything to aggravate her, keep your gun trained just in case. Dimitri ordered. Seeing that the woman was reaching almost to them, Dimitri vaulted over the sandbag barrier and approached her. He kept his AK-12 down as a sign he didn't wish to fight. Then, Dimitri addressed her. This is a restricted zone. Who are you? And why are you here? Dimitri demanded in the Shardaran language, his finger near his Kalashnikov's trigger. The woman grinned. I am Gazelle, servant of Her Highness, Hardy. She said. And I'm here because you have defiled Her Highness Temple. She said. Dimitri started backing away from Gazelle. Prepare to fire. He yelled in Russian. 
he increased his pace, aiming his rifle at the woman's head. Making it to the sandbags, Dimitri hopped onto the other side while keeping his rifle trained on the apostle. Lay down your weapons and I might spare you. She gave her ultimatum. Dimitri refused it. Open fire. Dimitri ordered. Immediately, hundreds of bullets were tossed at Gazelle by the Russians. Instead of dropping to the ground dead, she started walking forward again, deflecting bullets with her scythe. Dimitri watched as bullet wounds that did hit stitched together in her body. They weren't doing anything to her. Fuck run. He shouted at his squad. They took off in different directions, trying to find cover in order to evade the apostle. Dimitri found himself behind the remains of what used to be a house's wall. Confident in her power, Gazelle kept her walking pace as she slowly advanced on the squad. Her arrogance was clear with every stride she took, no mortal could survive her wrath. She'd clearly never met a Russian before. Dimitri watched as two Russian soldiers fired a rocket from their RPG at her. The rocket, traveling at a speed of 300 meters per second, was struck out of the air by her scythe. Unfortunately for Gazelle, it exploded, causing her to be knocked onto the ground and forcing the scythe out of her hands. Taking the initiative, Dimitri pulled the pin on one of his RGN-5 hand grenades and threw it at the downed apostle. Flying through the air, it landed next to Gazelle's leg and detonated on impact. Dimitri peeked out from his cover and saw that her leg had been torn off by the explosive power, preventing her from getting up. Sophia got the same idea and threw another grenade at her, blowing off Gazelle's left arm. With no time to lose, he ran out of his cover at Gazelle, firing a burst into her good arm to prevent her from picking up the scythe. The other squad members came out from their cover while Dimitri placed his boot onto Gazelle's chest. She looked up at him. W what was that? She screamed. Dimitri could hear the fear in her voice. Good, hopefully she'll be more cooperative now. That was power of a Russian weapon. You can stay down or I make you stay down. Dimitri said. The threat seemed to quell any thoughts of attacking Victor. Dimitri wait. Sophia came up to him speaking Ukrainian. This apostle could be useful, we could get the people's respect, make them trust us. Sophia explained. He looked up at her before looking back down at the fearful woman on the floor. Comrade, did we report this to command yet? Dimitri asked. No comrade lieutenant. You want me to contact them now? The soldier asked. Hold off on that for now. Dimitri thought about it a little. Having someone that was respected by the local population could get them far in future conflicts. It also meant that resistance forces in Belnago could be significantly reduced due to having support from one of Hardy's servants. He made his decision. Sophia, give the apostle an offer. She comes with us and supports our cause, in exchange we won't blow off all her limbs off and lock her in a box. Dimitri said, looking at her. She quickly relayed the offer to Gazelle. The apostle nodded immediately. I accept. She said immediately. There was a tremble in her voice. Dimitri removed his boot from her chest. You betray us, we won't give second chance. Understood? Dimitri said. Gazelle could only nod.